thank you for joining us here this morning um, as we present. This is our first Moodle Moot, and we're very excited to be here and presenting to you. Um, we are going to quickly tag team present on our use of H5P technology at Colgate University, which is a small private liberal arts college in upstate New York. I'll introduce myself first, and then I'll let my colleague Sarah introduce herself. Uh, my name is Kelly Dempsey, and I'm an instructional designer at Colgate. My main responsibility is supporting our faculty in the use of Moodle. I do a lot of other things, but that comprises about 85% of my work. Good morning. My name is Sarah Coonsey. I'm the instructional designer for Innovative Media, and for the last seven years, I've had the privilege of managing the Anita Grover and Tom Hargrove Digital Learning and Media Center at Colgate University. It's a really big mouthful, so we'll refer to the DLMC in our presentation. That is our multimedia lab. Along with a staff of 15 or 16 students, we support between 16 and 18 academic courses every semester in videos, podcasts, and other digital projects. So what is H5P? H5P is an open source, community-driven project to create richer online content and improve student learning experiences. So before we jump in any further, we'd like to ask the audience a few questions. Um, how many of you are aware of H5P or similar applications? Excellent. Um, also, were you aware that it can be fully integrated in Moodle? Okay, not as many. And then, how many of you are using H5P with Moodle? Could we get a few examples, please, from the audience, how you're using H5P? Could you tell us how you're using it? Anyone else want to give an example? All right, well, we'll okay. share how we do it. Okay. So what are the advantages of H5P? You can easily create interactive activities within Moodle. A lot of our focus is going to be on video-based and annotating video, but there are other kinds of content as well. It's free and open source. And it has single sign-on, which I didn't realize how important that was until Kelly explained it to me. I am not a Moodle user historically, and so I wasn't familiar, but apparently a lot of plugins, the students need to log in, create a different account. It's not as smoothly integrated. So this is completely integrated into our single sign-on Moodle. It integrates with a grade book, and it's mobile friendly. So the layouts and what you're creating is available on their devices, which is the way a lot of students get their content. So interactive video, that's the the prime part that we've been using it. And if you haven't used it, um, I guess the biggest thing I can say is it's more dynamic for the students. A lot of our faculty are using video in many ways. Some faculty have created um, lightboard videos for of con original content. Some are finding YouTube videos. But they don't know if the students are watching it or not. So this way, they can easily insert comments, maybe add context maybe make those connections more obvious to the students on why they picked that video. And they can insert knowledge checks, drag and drop, true and false, different interactions. Also, the questions can be adapted to perform adaptive behavior. If a student gets it wrong, the question can prompt them to go back where it would be. There are some cons. It's not perfect, so we're happy that it's always developing. One of the problems that we're having is that to embed the videos within Moodle, they have to be quite small. So our Lightboard videos, uh, my 15-minute demos on Final Cut Pro, they have to be hosted on YouTube. And some of our faculty don't want to put their intellectual property publicly on YouTube. It can be unlisted, so that helps, but it can't be private. So it would be great if we could embed video from our streaming server instead of just from a, publicly, a public thing like YouTube. We'd like to see that happen. So for those of you that are interested in um, trying out and testing um, this plugin, here's a link to it if you want to write that, write that down. Um, we are hosted by eThink Education. So shout out to eThink here. Um, 
<laughs> yes, thank you. Um, so they do all the installations for us. We don't have to do anything. Um, thank you very much for that. But we do have a small local test server where we install things ourselves. You're not supposed to know that, but we do. <laughs> uh, anyways, and it was very easy to use and install. Okay. So our first case study is um, a non-academic use of H5P. I manage, as I mentioned, the Digital Learning and Media Center. I have a staff that rolls completely over every two to three years, and as you can imagine, there are a lot of technicalities and some pretty sophisticated uh, things that the students need to learn. I get three days in the fall, and I may never see some of those students again that work nights and weekends. So I need to find a way, my challenge was to find a way to keep their skills up to date, keep the communication up to date, and if something changed in the software, we all know that hardware and software changes all the time. And so we needed a way to be able to keep these kids up to date. Um, I had a website, a Google site, but I really didn't know who was watching my videos, who was reading the announcements. So when Kelly showed me H5P and the ability to annotate video and insert knowledge checks and have accountability in the gradebook, it was fantastic. And I spent the entire summer and hired one of my students to come in and help me transfer my whole website into a Moodle course. So this was, a, this was very big for us. Um, the students loved it. The students were able to go through those videos on learning different techniques in Final Cut Pro and how to use the checkout system that we use. And if changes came, I didn't even have to change the video. I could just add a little label that, oh, this part is been superseded, this now something's new, and here's what we do. And the kids really love it, and they know where to go back to find it. I've gotten a lot fewer questions, nights and weekends, and I've got some really positive feedback from the students that my students are helping, that they're on the ball, they have the right answers to the questions. So they're not getting graded, but they are held accountable for, for keeping up to date and learning these things. So Kelly has an academic example. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about how we used, um, let me forward, um, H5P in a Russian language class. So I had a um, Russian language professor come to me um, for some help, and during uh, my consultation with him, he talked about how difficult it was for students to um, come to class prepared. Is anyone in here surprised about that? Um, so he we talked about using H5P a little bit, and let me tell you how uh, we, he's using it now. So he assigned short films in Russian to his students that they have to watch before class. It's one of many ways to help them learn um, this la difficult language. So because we know all students aren't prepared for class and they don't do their homework, um, enter H5P. Um, the, he used the interactive H5P questions in the foreign films that he was showing, and he, was, he placed spots along the film such as, um, with questions such as true and false, multiple choice, etc. The students had to stop the video, answer the question, and the way he set it up was if they got the, the question wrong, uh, the, the film rewound to the point of the content where they had to relearn it. So they couldn't keep going forward until they got the answers all correct and um, it was graded, so the students knew that they had to complete this before coming to class the next day. Um, this motivated students, so they were more prepared for the, the discussions, and the students actually really enjoyed it. They felt like they were really engaging with the video content. Um, they weren't just sitting there watching it, and they really had to focus and understand what the language was that they were learning. Um, as a result of this success that we had, we are, this was our first attempt at using H5P. We are now um, holding demo sessions to introduce more faculty to H5P. And these are faculty that Sarah works with that are doing um, video um, projects with their students. Um, any, anything else you wanted to add, Sarah, before we go on? Oh, um, no, I just, I, I guess I wanted to reiterate the fact that even though my test case is not academic, I thought there were a lot of similarities. And there are a few things we're still looking for. I really wanted a free response option um, that would load in the gradebook, and I realized that technically that could be really challenging to do. I don't know how to do it. 
but I would really like to see that going forward. So if anybody's listening, uh, an example of a short free response would be really appreciated. That's one thing. And I understand yesterday Martin uh, said that uh, H5P will be added to core Moodle uh, with the 3.5 or 3.6, I don't remember which, and that'll be, that'll be great. Oh, seven? Okay. 3.7. All right, well, we have a little <laughs> time to wait. Little, yeah. we, can, we can play around till then. So that's the end of our formal presentation, but we'd love to field any questions that you might have. Yes. So the question was, what were the consequences if the student didn't watch the short video? Um, it, it reflected in the grade, so it was a, a complete or incomplete, and they had um, 10 of these to watch during the semester, so it reflected in their grade, and obviously they weren't prepared for the discussion. It was a small class, so it kind of stands out if you didn't do the reading or watch the video. Yes, I'm sorry, yes. We, the due date was prior to the class. Yes, thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Great question. So um, she asked if um, they got the question wrong, it rewound back to the part of the content, and if um, they continued to watch, did it jump over that question again, or did they have to answer it again? And, and yes, they did have to answer it again until they got it right. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's a good question. They could have scrubbed through that, I guess. Um, that's a really good question. The only part that they s actually had to stop at was the the question the cl the question again. So the videos were about 20 minutes. How many knowledge checks did he have inserted? There were 10 knowledge checks. Um, I'll, that's a great question. Any others? Yes. The question is, what format works best with H5P? Um, we just used it with YouTube videos. We didn't have much success actually embedding because of the size restrictions. So they were on, on YouTube, and most of the stuff I think that I put up is MP4. I'm not sure about what the yeah. other people put up. Any other questions? Happy to, oh, yes, sir. Yes. Great. Vimeo Pro uh, will allow you to set your videos as private and um, you can, they work, integrate with H5P well. That Thank you. Very interesting fact. Thank That's you for that. And there was one more in the back. Yes. Um, we are on 3.4 and I think it works for 2.0. I think it begins at 2.7. You're welcome, thank you. Thanks very much.